So in the 90s, I was driving, what was I driving in the 90s? I was driving an Isuzu Rodeo. That was a mistake. I bought a brand new Lada Neva and I was restoring old Land Rovers, uh, Series 2A Land Rovers from the 60s. I was restoring those as kind of a fun hobby. In 96, I bought a, a Toyota Tacoma when they first came here and uh, I leased it for four years. So these came out in the 90s, the same time as my Tacoma did, but I don't recall these whatsoever. I have no memory of these things at all. The OG of the RAV4s, this is the Gen 1. Mine is a 99. I picked it up on the island, as some of you know, and I'm going to do a review here. And we're going to be all over the place. I'm going to be in the mountains, I'm going to be out in the prairies, and we're going to take a good look at this Gen 1 RAV4. Let's quickly look at the specs and then we'll get out there. This is a 1999 RAV4. This is the four-door version. They come in front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. This is an all-wheel drive. It's split 50-50, which is awesome. In 1998, I believe they upgraded the engine horsepower to 127 horsepower and 132 foot-pounds of torque. It's a two-liter gas engine and it's an inline four. This came in a five-speed and a four-speed automatic. This one here is a four-speed automatic. Wheelbase is 94.9 inches. Curb weight is 2,800 pounds. It's uh, a good thousand pounds lighter than the uh, Gen 5, the new RAV4s. So this is kind of the habitat this thing is in. This is uh, the stuff I drive in. It's uh, snowy and wintry here, and you can be driving for like six months of the year in snow. Um, so that's just the way it is. And uh, the all wheel drive system on this thing is awesome. It's split 50-50, and you have to have something really reliable because if you get stuck out here, there's nobody coming to help you. Um, really, there's no cell signals most of the time out here, and uh, you gotta have something reliable and uh, something's gonna get you back home and also get you through the snow. And this little guy here is the deal. I've got a photo of this abandoned homestead that I took in the summer a few years back. I'm gonna post it here, but uh, so there it is now, today, end of March. So this is it, the 99 uh, RAV4 that I picked up on the island for 2250 delivered to the shop. And the reason I bought this thing was because there's no rust on it. There's zero rust on this car. It's got dirt, but it's got no rust. Check the doors. The doors are like brand new uh, under here. Factory fresh. I'm going to go over this quickly here with you now. I'm going to tell you what I've done to it, what I plan on doing to it, and just give you kind of a, a feel for what this car is in 2023 and if it's going to be good for you. It's awesome. I think it's definitely good for me. Yeah, so let's take a look here. So these are the stock wheels on this. They're 16 inch. These are steel. I'm going to keep them because they're original. This is original first gen RAV4. And they're missing these cool hubcaps that go on. I'm going to find those. I'll track those down on eBay. Um, the tires again are brand new um, snow tires and these are one size bigger than stock. These are 225 70 16s. Stock is 215 70 16. All right, here we are. This is the little engine. This is the 
2 liter. Uh, this guy does have a timing belt. The next gen after this, which I had the Gen 1, has a timing chain. I, I believe all the RAV4s after this one had a timing chain. This thing doesn't leak any oil and surprisingly doesn't burn a drop. My uh, exhaust got cut out. They stole the catalytic converter, so I got an engine light on right now uh, until I fix that. Right now, I just got a straight pipe on it. But yeah, it's looking good. It's running great. This has got a couple bruises on it from the grocery store for sure. Some of the paint's peeled off the plastic bumper here in the back, but no big deal. The spare tire uh, is kind of cool. I like the look of that. Plus I can mount stuff to it. I can put a, a bike rack or whatever I want on that. The jerry can, it opens up huge, uh, as you know. For you. So there's the barn door, guys. That's how it rolls. I got a ton of crap in there, but lots of space, huge door. And somebody mentioned in the comments they had one. Um, it was Jerry. He said, hey, uh, we had one of these in the 90s and somebody you know, backed into them or ran into the back of them. And if you get hit, um, in the back of these things it's not hitting the bumper it's pushing that tire into the door and messing the door up so that's something to, to uh, factor in for sure i didn't really think about it but uh thanks uh, jerry for the heads up 127 horsepower isn't a lot obviously this thing's a bit of a sloth on the road it's fine i'm not i'm not gonna win any races that's for sure but uh you gotta remember back in the day in the early 90s the 80 series land cruiser i don't know how much more it weighed than this only had like 155 horsepower so uh, it wasn't a big deal, obviously, back then. And my old red pickup truck, the Toyota, that thing's a sloth as well. But the idea behind these, I think, is reliability. So you gotta remember, this is only 127 horsepower, but it's uh, 1,000 pounds lighter than the new RAVs. It's also about a foot shorter uh, in wheelbase compared to the new RAVs. So I'll give you guys an update on my RX300. It was the best vehicle I ever bought on the planet as far as used. That thing was a beast. I can't say nothing bad about it. Epic. 10 out of 10 beast mode car drove beautifully uh, guy has it now on the island so it's living the good life it's not running through the winter and uh, minus 40 anymore so it's resting peacefully over there kind of like the look of it i don't think i would have liked this in the 90s i probably would have thought it was a uh, cheese but i like it now so i don't know if i mentioned this thing's a f beast in the snow all right guys so i want to talk about the all-wheel drive system on this if you didn't know a lot of the uh, uh new stuff that's out it's usually a, a front wheel drive bias thing and the back will kick in a little bit when it senses slippage. This guy is before any of that gas saving deal. Uh, this is 50-50 split. And I'm gonna give a shout out to a, a guy that I've been watching uh, some tips on how to fix these things. It's called, uh, his channel is called Lab Colt Paul. I'll put a link to that in the description below. I love the front end. The glass is awesome on these. They're, it's actually glass. Somebody said to me, hey, would you get those, those aftermarket? No, no, those are that's the real deal right there. I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but this is made in Japan. So here's a quick rundown of what I've done and what I'm going to do. I did the timing belt, water pump, oil, pump seals. All the gaskets are done. All the belts are done. I did the upstream O2 sensor. I did the thermostat, EGR valve, uh, new springs and shocks, new snow tires. I did that on the island as well as rear brake drums. I also put on new rear side marker lights. I'm going to put new front struts in it and when I do I'm going to put spring spacers all the way around uh, just to give it a bit of a lift nothing crazy tire size I'm going to keep it the same it doesn't have enough juice enough power to push a bigger tire in my opinion not up the mountain roads that I'm on anyway so this thing's been awesome to drive there's no weird uh, issues with it at all there's no uh, steering wobble or any creaks or bumps or uh, any weird sounds it's just been great and uh, before I get inside here and show you the interior uh, I'm going to mention that you can actually get a uh, locking rear diff for this and you can also get limited slip diffs for this. So I'm gonna quickly show you something here that's kind of cool. These guys, as a factory option, you could get these, um, they're saddlebags almost. They're little bags that went on there, two of them. And there was a rail that was installed here and then you put those bags on there to, you know, to hold your crap. So I've got a couple old uh, bicycle saddlebags. There's one there and I think I'm going to rig something up in the back here so uh, I can get both of them on. That might be kind of cool just to keep your stuff in there. So these are a little bit different than the Gen 2 that I had. This guy folds up the same but they don't pop out. The Gen 2 I had, the seats just popped right out. It was pretty cool so you had that whole space in there to, uh, to load. Same low load height, really low. It's at maybe just at my knee and let's go take a look inside. So interior wise, um, it's a little bit messy in here. I haven't done anything with it. I, I'm going to get it detailed or do it myself. Um, but this is the, the funky pattern inside. And there's no rips on this thing whatsoever. There's no cracks on the dash. Uh, it's just in perfect condition. Um, here's the door panels. They got kind of this funky perforated look to it. And this does have power windows and door locks. And I'm going to fold these seats up for you quick and show you how that goes down. Pop the headrests out. 
and then you pull this guy and it folds down boom that's just like the uh, second gen that I had and then there's a little latch underneath this seat here that you pop to fold the seats up like that if you're wondering what this does this is a little strap that holds the seat in that position there's a little hook here hooks onto and away you go it's kind of cool this has uh, two holes two slots for the seat headrest when it's not um, when it's folded up like that kind of cool and these seats do recline if you pull this you can you can recline them back the seats in the front here they are the bolsters are all good again it probably needs a little cleaning in here I'll get to that at some point um, but yeah tons of headroom so this is basically like my forerunner uh, it just looks exactly like my forerunner from the same era the uh, third gen it's got the same kind of layout for for heat and everything else this has got a, a 2 CD uh, AM FM radio that's the factory one so this is an ECT power button same as on my forerunner it's located here a little bit different than the forerunner but if you had a five-speed first-gen RAV this is a locking center diff button which is kind of cool it's uh, it's good you can lock the diff the center diff but only if the vehicle is stopped and I think you can only run it at about 25 miles an hour have to double check that the dash is great there's no cracks nothing going on here pretty basic layout pretty awesome um, yeah really not much to it that's kind of why I like it I think so from what I've read RAV4 means recreational adventure vehicle allegedly I like the look of these now I don't know they look kind of bulbous like a, a little dune buggy so these early version RAV4s have tons of headroom and tons of glass. Um, it's like being in a fishbowl. So if you're picking your nose, you will be spotted. Thanks for watching everyone and have an awesome weekend.